Hey, and welcome back for another 3D how-to video. First, I want to say thanks for all the feedback that I got on my last Blender video. A lot of you game developers on Reddit actually gave me a lot of good feedback and a lot of good comments on the video, so I just want to say thanks. So to continue our series on creating assets for a uh, medieval fantasy RPG, we're going to create some elements that would be in the landscape around our castle or around the world. So we're going to make a couple of boulders and a couple of trees. In the last video, we learned how to import objects and create our own assets from just using primitive objects. But in this video, we're going to learn some more tools to add even more detail. So go ahead and open Blender and follow along, and let's get started. So we're going to start out in object mode with the default cube once you open Blender. And over here on the right next to our design tree, you're going to see uh, it says transform and it gives some, some input boxes. This is the properties region. When you're in object mode and you have an item or an object selected, you're going to be given these inputs and, and can change them however you want. So first we can see that our object is halfway in the default grid. We want to move it up so it's just at the grid level. So it's like, it's like the grid is the ground and it's sitting on the ground. So in transform, we're just going to go to the Z axis. And if we, move, if we go to the origin tool and we move it up and down, we can see that the Z uh, input changes. So if we see that it's just about ground level, it's about one. So we're just going to type in one to round it out. Okay, there we go. Once you move the cube wherever you want it, you can go down here into the header and go from object mode to edit mode. So in our default cube, we have only the amount of edges that form a six-sided cube. What we want to do is create more edges to manipulate so that we can get a more organic shape like a rock. So to create more edges, we can go over to the tool shelf over here and select Loop, Cut, and Slide. And as you hover over the cube, you can see that it's uh, trying to guess where you would like to put that edge. Now once a suggested edge appears that you want to put on your object, Without clicking, move the scroll wheel to increase or decrease the number of edges that it'll create. We're going to keep this pretty simple, so let's just go with creating two new edges. Now once you click the mouse, it'll allow you to move the edges that you created. We're just going to leave them right in the middle. So let's go ahead and do that one more time, but on the other side. Over in the tool shelf, let's click uh, loop, cut, and slide. We're going to put it right here. Without clicking, we're going to move the scroll wheel and increase that to two. We're going to click and then just put it right in the middle. So now the next step is to select these, these vertexes or vertices, these edges and these faces to manipulate them and to make it look more organic and move them however you want. So to do that, we can see down on the header that we can choose select vertex, the edge select, or the face select. So we're going to start out by moving the edges. So by right clicking on an edge, it'll allow you to select it and by moving the origin tool, it'll allow you to move them up and down. So let's just experiment with this a little bit and we'll see if we can get it close to the rock shape that we want. Now, just like moving an edge, we can also move the vertices. So let's select vertices and you'll see that when you select the intersection between edges, which is a vertex, it'll allow you to move those as well. So let's move those around a little bit to see if we can get it closer to the shape that we want. So we started out with the cube, added a couple of edges, and by manipulating the vertices and the edges that were created through that, we already have something that looks like a boulder. And what we can do now is select the whole thing, copy it, and make it look like there's a little bit more uh, depth to it, add some smaller rocks around it from what we already have. So let's select Z to go into wireframe mode, select B for border select to select the whole thing. We can exit wireframe mode by clicking Z again, and click Shift D to duplicate. Okay, let's click X to just move in the X direction. And with the whole thing still selected, we can go to scale and just scale it down a little bit. And we can also rotate it around so it's showing different uh, sides of the rock. Click Z to rotate it around the Z axis and just move it into place. We can then copy that one again, scale it and make it look even better. Okay. 
All right, that was pretty quick and easy. All we had to do is create a couple rocks, move them around, and we have something that looks pretty natural. It's a little bit low poly, but I mean, it, it looks pretty good, especially if that's a look you're going for. You can always add more edges and more vertices to create it even more detailed. So once we're done with that, let's go up into the design tree and just rename this rock. Let's exit edit mode into object mode. There we go, that looks awesome. So let's go ahead and dive right into creating the tree. And this is gonna incorporate a lot of the same tools that we use to create the rock. So to start off creating the tree, we're gonna import a cylinder instead of using the default cube. So go down to add, mesh, cylinder, and without clicking the mouse or selecting anything, we can change the number of vertices in the cylinder. We don't want this to be too, too detailed. We want this to match the rock. So we're gonna decrease the number of vertices. I think 12 would be pretty good. That'll give us enough detail to move around and extrude some branches out from it. Just move it up into the grid, just like that. So once we have that at grid level, let's go ahead and hop into edit mode so we can start making changes. And we're just gonna select the top face, make sure that face select is selected. And we're just gonna increase this until it's the height that we want. We're gonna say it goes to about, let's see, we can orbit around here. Let's make it about, let's see, this tall. I think that could look pretty good. So to add the detail to this, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we did with the rock and create more edges using the loop cut. So let's go ahead and increase this. Let's see, that looks pretty good. And once that's selected, we can move it up and down and we're just gonna place it right in the middle there, okay? So let's go ahead and start at the bottom and move our way up the tree. So first, let's move these vertices out to look a little bit more like roots. So with, with uh, vertex select selected, we can then just select a vertex and move it out. We're just gonna keep doing that around the tree just to give it a little bit of a root look. Yeah, this kind of looks like roots. It at least gives the idea that the roots are then going under, underground. So it's just showing what the surface of the bottom of the tree would look like. You can also select multiple vertices or edges or faces at once by using shift select. So to make this look a little bit more like a tree, we're gonna change the thickness and vary it a little bit as it goes up the tree. So one thing that's really important and really useful in Blender is selecting an edge as it goes around an entire object. If we were to use edge select and select an edge, it only selects the one edge in between those vertices, but we can use a shortcut to select all the edges that, that are connected to that edge right there. So if we hold down Alt, and select an edge that we want, you can see that it selects the whole edge around the tree. So from there, we can use scale to move it in and out and make it larger, a larger radius and a smaller radius. So if we use scale, we can just move that in and out. Let's do that all the way up the tree and just give it a little bit of variation. So along with scaling those cross sections, we can also translate them and move them back and forth so we can give it a little bit of a shape like it's leaning or curving. So let's just start at the top and we can curve that in one area and we can just keep doing that around the tree. So let's go ahead and give this tree some branches. To do that, let's go down in the header and make sure that face select is selected. And let's click on this region right here. To extrude that, we can go over to Extrude Region over here on the tool shelf, or we can use the shortcut E on the keyboard. Okay. Whoa. Don't want it that long. Okay, so bring it out to here, and then we can translate it a little bit. To create the variations in the tree branch like we did with the tree trunk, we could either extrude out a long section and we could use the uh, loop cuts to make more edges on the branch to then manipulate 
Or we could create a small section or extrude out a small section from the trunk. And then from there, extrude out another one, extrude out another one, and that will create edges just like it would by using the loop cut. We're gonna use that method. So click E to extrude it out. And once we click the mouse, we can then move it around. We're gonna extrude it out a little bit more, move it up, move it around a little bit. And let's just keep doing this for all the branches. So just like we did with the trunk of the tree, let's loop select the different edges that we want and we can scale them to make them taper like real branches would. So make sure edge select is selected, alt right click to select, and then we can use S to scale. Okay, that definitely looks a lot better than before. It's funny how when you actually rough out something, how ridiculous it looks until you just tweak a couple things and then it looks a lot better. So what we're gonna do is actually leave this one the way it is in terms of its shape, because this can be a dead tree in our environment. So let's go ahead and hop into object mode and change the name from cylinder to dead tree. Oops, dead tree, there we go. Now keeping it gray works for the rock, but we want this tree to be, well, tree colored. We want it to be a brown, dark brown or light brown or something like that. So what we could do is in edit mode, we can go over to this material selector over here. It's a little uh, shaded uh, sphere right here. And to change the color, we can go to new. And this will allow us to select a material to apply to different objects. So because we are in the edit mode of the dead tree, uh, when we apply the color, it's gonna apply to the tree. So to change the color, we can go down here where it says diffuse, and it'll open up a, uh, a color spectrum that we then can select uh, different colors, and we wanna make it brown. So let's go into the orangish area, make it a little darker. There we go, that looks really good. There are a lot of different other tools and editing, editing selections and everything in this, but we're just gonna change the color for now. So once you're happy with that, we can select Assign. And with that done, let's go ahead and hop back into object mode. There we go. So our dead tree is created. But we also wanna create some live trees, which will be the same thing as the dead tree, but it's gonna have some foliage on it. So to copy this tree in object mode, we can click Shift D for duplicate, move it over here, and you see that it gives it a, a brand new object name. So we're gonna call this live tree. Okay. So what I personally like to do is if I am going to be adding some kind of shape or model that will have its own material or color, I like to create a whole new model for it. What that means is I'm not gonna be adding any uh, new objects under live tree. I'm gonna create an object called uh, tree leaves or tree foliage or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. In object mode, we can go down to add, mesh, and icosphere. And you can see that in the uh, design tree, we have something called Icosphere. So we're gonna change that to tree leaves. So let's go ahead and move that into place on one of the branches. Scale that up a little bit. There we go. Now all I'm doing is editing the UV sphere. I'm not editing the tree or anything. So if I wanna select the uh, the leaves, I can go into um, into wireframe mode, click B for border select, and I can select anything on the screen and I'm only selecting the, the tree leaves. So let's leave wireframe mode and let's just start selecting vertices on this to make it look more like a natural uh, bunch of leaves on a tree. So, so far we learned how to use border select, but another type of select is circle select. Now this will come in handy when we wanna select multiple vertices at once. So by going down to select on the header, we could select circle select or the shortcut key is C. So I wanna make sure I'm selecting the vertices. So down on the header, I'm gonna make sure vertex select is selected. Click C and just start selecting vertices and moving them around.
Okay, I think that looks pretty good for now. If we want to manipulate a little bit more, we can do that later. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the rocks. We're going to select the whole thing, duplicate it, scale it, and move it around, just so we don't have to create uh, all new ones from scratch. So in wireframe mode, we're going to use border select, select the whole thing, leave wireframe mode, shift D to duplicate, and just put that somewhere and move it into place and scale it. So now let's go ahead and change the color of these leaves like we did with the tree. In materials, go to new, select the color palette here and diffuse, and we're going to make them green. Not that green. <laughs> A little bit darker. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Hit assign. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we've learned how to use the loop cut, we can use that to add tons and tons of detail to our objects. We could use a ton of loop cuts to create a lot of detail, or we could use a few to give it a cool low poly look. Definitely give this one a try, and I totally would love to see what you create, so go ahead and tweet me a picture of your model. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video, please leave it down in the comment section and I'd love to get back to you or even make a video on any of your recommendations. Also, if you like this video and want to see more in this series, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.